So you've completed tuning input shaper on your 3D printer using an accelerometer and you're ready to go fast. The question is, how fast can you go? Well, I'm gonna show you how you can do a quick and simple tuning test to find out the maximum acceleration you should be running your 3D printer at. So this video is pretty much a follow-up to the recent stream where we did this procedure live. And to ensure you're not missing out on those weekly live streams, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and ring that bell. Yay, YouTube algorithm stuff. Now in that stream, I did cover some additional questions about the ADXL 345 and input shaping in general. And I also went over how we went ahead and found out what the maximum acceleration we should be running this 3D printer is at. Now when it comes to finding out the maximum acceleration of your printer, it's very much like a pressure advanced tuning. You're gonna run a simple print using some parameters inputted, and you're gonna measure the results on the print, and you're gonna use that to determine your maximum acceleration value. Now the object we're gonna be printing here is the ringing tower from the Clipper GitHub files. Now we are gonna to have to print it at some specific settings. You are gonna to want to print it with a layer height of around 0.2 or 0.25 millimeters. You can go ahead and turn off top and bottom layers as well as infill. You can print it with one to two perimeters. However, you can also print it in vase mode with a one to two millimeter thick base. You are gonna to wanna to print it fast at approximately 800 to 100 millimeters a second. I went with 100 millimeters a second. This will depend on your printer. And you wanna make sure your minimum layer time is at most three seconds. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure in your slicer any acceleration control settings are disabled. Now, when you go to print the model, you should be printing it as the model loads with the X and the Y in this direction, such as that. You should not be rotating this model at all. Depending on the size of your printer bed, you may have to scale this model down slightly on a smaller printer. This model is 120 by 120 millimeters. If you do have to scale the model down, scale it down as minimally as possible. Now, before you go to print this model, you are gonna have to input some commands to your console. The first one is disabling pressure advance. You're gonna want that turned off for this test. And then the second one here, and I'll have these linked below, and the second command lets it know that it's running a tuning tower test for acceleration. It's gonna start at 1,250 millimeters a second for acceleration and ramp up from there. Now, you're gonna go ahead and let this print complete. And once it's done, let it cool, remove it from your print bed and pull up your calipers because you're gonna have to measure some stuff now. And what you're gonna be looking at is the portion here with these curves and where the gap widens, that's gonna be the point that your acceleration is starting to get too much. So an easy way to measure this is know that when you start, you're at 1250 millimeters a second for acceleration and each band is an additional 500 millimeters of acceleration. So what you're going to do is measure from the bottom to the point where you start seeing gaps in your print. And then you're gonna count the full bands that are good and then stop once you get to a band that has a gap. So in my case here, we have 1250, 1750, 2250, 2750, 3250, 3750. And then there was a little bit of a gap starting to open up here around 3,500, but as you can see here, above 3,750, we start having the gap open up and widen, and at that point, we are pushing it too hard on the acceleration. So what I recommend is go ahead and find out where the gap starts to open, and then drop it down to the next full value. So in my case here, I'm gonna run with a maximum acceleration of 3,500 millimeters per second on this printer. Now, during the stream, some other questions did come up in regards to input shaper, so I'll go through those as well. One thing that did come up was in terms of how to fix the accelerometer to your printer and whether something such as double-sided tape or blue tack is sufficient. So this was something that we did during the live stream. I went ahead and taped down the accelerometer to the bed and we compared it to the results from screwing it down to the bed rigidly. And as you can see here, the chart on the left is with it taped to the bed and the chart on the right is with it rigidly mounted to the bed. Now, as you can see here, there is a difference in the amount of vibrations measured. So as you can see here, with it screwed to the bed, we are measuring around 65 Hertz. And with it just taped to the bed, we are measuring 69.2 Hertz. So there is a bit of variation between rigidly mounting it and having it mounted using something that's not as secure, in our case here, double-sided tape. So what this goes to show you is that depending on the method you use for mounting the accelerometer, you may have a slight variation in measured outcome. Now, when it comes to doing your input shaper tune and the value, it's kind of akin to a PID tune on a printer's hot end. 
when you PID tune your hot end for 200 degrees Celsius and you decide to run it at 210 or 220, the values aren't going to be perfect, but you're going to be close enough that you're probably not going to see much of a difference in the outcome. This can be true of input shaper. If you are off a couple of values when it comes to tuning your input shaper, the majority of the time you're really not going to notice much, if any, of a difference as long as you're close enough. So if you're unable to mount the accelerometer to your bed, say for example it has a glass bed that is fixed in place and you have nowhere to screw this to, you can go ahead, double-sided tape it, use blue tack, whatever you have to do, just try and secure it as rigidly as possible. Now another thing that did come up during the streams and I've been asked a lot about it as well is the values for input shaper itself and why I recommend starting with the MZV instead of using the values that input shaper recommends that it spits out during the tune. So you may have noticed on the chart here when you do your input shaper tuning it does recommend a value and it does recommend a specific input shaper. So in our case here with the bed on the y-axis it was recommending an input shaper of 3 hump EI and a value of 65.8 hertz. So you may be wondering why I didn't recommend going with that and I recommend going with whatever peak is the highest and using MZV. And the reason for that is sometimes the recommended value that it gives you can be a little bit too aggressive. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and printed two calibration cubes here. Now both of these are the Voron calibration cube, they're printed at 200%. Both of these are the exact same G code. They are printed at 3500 acceleration, which is what we decided was going to be our max for this printer. And the only difference is, is one cube is printed with the values from the original video with MZV as the input shaper. And the second one here is printed with 3 hump EI and the values that input shaper recommended I used. Now when you compare these two prints, they are going to be relatively close to each other in quality. Now I have gone ahead and redone the pressure advance tune for both of these as well, because remember you do have to redo your pressure advance anytime you adjust anything in terms of input shaper and the values used. So when you compare the two cubes here, and the cube on the right is the one with the recommended values, the cube on the left is with the MZV values, you can see that the cube on the right does have a little bit less ringing. However, one thing that's going to be kind of hard to show in the camera is that the corners themselves are not quite as crisp on the cube with the recommended settings versus the cube with the MZV settings. And that is one of the big differences with the more aggressive input shapers. They do have a tendency to round the edges of a sharp object. So that's why I recommend you go with the MZV values. You are going to have a noticeable improvement in print quality versus no input shaper. And then if you are looking to improve quality a little bit more, go ahead and start trying out some of the more aggressive input shapers and see if there is an outcome that is desirable to what you're looking for. Now you have to remember as well, input shaper is not a magic bullet. You're not going to be able to do an input shaper tune, find out your max acceleration, and then set those values in your printer, find out your max flow rate, set that to max, and print all day and still get perfect objects. You are still going to have to do things such as control your speeds. You may have to drop acceleration when it comes to outer perimeters so you can still get the quality that you're looking for. Just because you can run at a maximum of 3500 acceleration doesn't mean that that means the print quality will always be great at 3500 acceleration. So what I do is I normally take my max value, use that for things such as inner perimeters, infill, travel, and then for my outer perimeters and small details, I usually still drop the acceleration to about half that just to ensure that I'm getting the maximum amount of quality out of my printers. And this comes in really handy when you're printing objects with a lot of small details. Now, when you're printing objects such as prototypes or objects that you don't really care about finish because you're just printing, you know, a mounting bracket, go ahead and increase your values as high as you can go. This will definitely allow you to mass produce items for structural tests, for example, at a much higher rate and still get great quality out of the prints. I know a lot of people who do the Voron printed forward program, run input shaper on their machines, and they're saving several hours when it comes to printing full batches of Voron parts and still getting great print quality. So I hope you found this video informative. This was kind of a recap of the recent live stream and I just wanted to kind of condense that information down. So if you like the video, make sure you like that smash button. If you want to support the content I create and the things I do, there are links in the description as well. I hope you learned something new today and as always, have yourself a great day. Thank you.